Welcome back to Introduction to Trigonometry. Today we're going to cover basic calculator operations and how they relate to trigonometry, the reciprocal functions, whatever the heck they are. I want to cover complementary angles and how they relate to trigonometry functions, decimal versus DMS notation, and of course, most importantly, the applications of all these things and how we can use them in real life. Okay, now remember what I asked you to memorize last time, and you will not be able to survive if you don't memorize at least these six things. We've got a right triangle here, and I know it's a right triangle because it has a right angle in it. Now, if I have an angle in there, I'm going to have to name the three sides of the triangle so that we can all be talking about the same thing. Let's call the side that the right angle would bite if it bit down. Okay, let's call that the hypotenuse. We'll call that. The side that the angle x degrees would bite if it bit down is the opposite. It's also called the opposite leg. Remember that the legs make up the right angle. And then the other side is right next to the x degrees, so that's the adjacent leg. Okay, we'll need to know that. And we'll need to memorize these six functions. The tangent is the ratio of the opposite divided by the adjacent, whatever number you get for that when you actually do the, the math. Okay? The sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, and the cosine is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Okay? Now, those are three of them. What about the other ones? The cotangent, not the cot, the cotangent is the adjacent leg divided by the opposite leg. The secant, spelled S-E-C of an angle, is the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent. And the cosecant is the hypotenuse divided by the opposite. Now, that covers every possible thing that can happen. Okay? So those are the things you'll have to memorize you know, throughout the whole course. Now, let's start talking about calculator operations. What am we going to need you to know? First of all, I need you to know how to find basic functions, sine, cosine, tangent, that kind of stuff. Okay? I'm going to need you to know how to find reciprocal functions, okay? And I'll show you what they are, okay? And I'm going to need you to find inverse functions. They are different animals than reciprocal functions, okay? Now, before we start with that, it's important for you to note where certain buttons are, okay? Can we zoom in a little bit? And let's see if we can pick up before, you know, uh, on your calculator. If you get your calculator out now, uh, you're going to need to know, I'm going to be talking about the mode button. Okay, and the mode button is right there. And it says mode on it, heaven forbid. Well, that's not too bad, okay? And the second button, it actually says second on it, and we're going to be using that. It's, it's like the shift on, the, uh, on a typewriter, okay? Now, the next one's a little bit tough. I'll need, need you to find, and that's the angle button. And the angle button doesn't say angle on it. Uh, it says angle above it, okay? It says matrix on it, actually. Okay, so we'll be using the angle button in combination with the second button. Okay, so make sure you find that. Okay? Okay, oh, there's one other button you have to find. Okay? And that is the on button. Okay? Let's try a couple. Okay, everybody flip your uh, calculator on, and we're going to try some. Okay? Let's see. How would we find uh, the sine or cosine of something? Well, the first thing we need to know when we start to do this is that there's two ways the calculator can speak. The calculator can talk in radian language, which we don't know how to do it, don't get worried on me, or we can talk in degree measure language. Okay? We need to make sure that we're talking in degrees right now. Okay? So we're going to have it do that. Um, what I'd like you to do, I'm going to walk over the calculator now, and we're going to get it into uh, degree mode, we'll call it. Okay, so let me turn this bad boy on. And I'm going to hit the mode button. Now, how am I going to get this in degree measure? I'm going to move down to the third line. As you can see, I'm moving down using the cursor buttons. I can either be on degree or I can be on radian. I'm going to move over to degree using the right cursor, and I'm going to hit Enter. Now, degree is darker than radian. And I'm going to move out. I've, I've set it to degree mode and all clear. Okay? Nothing fantastic, except that I'm 
positive that it's now in degree mode. Okay? Now I can start asking it questions knowing that it's speaking in degrees. Okay? For instance, what is the tangent of 45 degrees? Okay? Oh, I happen to know the answer, but let's try it on the calculator. Find the tangent button down in the fourth row. I'll hit tan, and then I'll type 45. I don't need to hit degrees because I told it I was in degrees. And I don't need to hit the right parentheses, actually. I'll hit enter. And son of a gun, guess what? The tangent of 45 degrees happens to be 1. That's one I can remember. OK? OK, what's another one we want to do? The cosine of 56 degrees. Let's find the cosine of 56 degrees. I'll go back to the calculator here. Fine, just to get familiar with this, let's hit the cosine button. I see it, it remembers the last one I did. The cosine button and 56, and I'll hit enter. Oof. Comes out to some horrendous number, OK? The number I got is about 5591. I won't go out any further than four decimal places, usually in this class. That's close enough, OK? OK. Now, this is called not the sine of 0.5, but the inverse sine of 0.5. We're going to be using this. Uh, well, I'll show you why we use it, but for right now, I want to make sure you know how to find it, OK? Basically, it's going to tell us what angle has a sine of 0.5, rather than finding the sine of 0.5. On the calculator, uh, the inverse sine, you're going to have to hit the second button, which we talked about, and then the sine. Let's try it. The inverse sine is right above the sine key. So hit your second button on the top left. And then hit, and nothing happens, OK? And then hit the sine button. And son of a gun, you get sine to the minus 1, which means inverse sine, OK? Now, what do we want to take the inverse sine of? 0.5, OK? And hit Enter. And apparently, the inverse sine of 0.5 is 30, 30 degrees. I know because I'm in degree mode, OK? Well, let's prove that. How could we prove that? Let's take the sine of 30 degrees to prove that. OK? Just going to hit the sign button without the second. Just get a regular schmegular sign. Take 30, hit Enter, and it is 0.5. OK, so I know I'm right. OK? Now the cosecant is the hypotenuse over the opposite. The hypotenuse over the opposite. And you look on your calculator, you're not going to see a cosecant button. One way. To get the cosecant of 30 degrees, since we don't have that button, is to note that, as I told you, I had to memorize the cosecant is the hypotenuse over the opposite, which is the reciprocal of the sine, which is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So if we wanted to find the cosecant of 30 degrees, we could just do 1 over the sine of 30 degrees. And that's what we'll do. Let's try it. Let's try it in the calculator. I'll hit 1 divided by, now I can hit the sine of 30 degrees, and hit enter. And guess what? The cosecant of 30 degrees is 2. OK? So those are the basic functions, at least for right now, I'm going to need you to be able to do. How to take, take a function, how to take an inverse function, and how to take what we'll call a reciprocal function, like cosecant, one that there is no button for. OK? OK, what's all this good for anyway? What, what am I going to use this for? Well, i got to tell you, I'll give you a couple stories. My first interest with trigonometry began in, in when, back when I was in school. And I worked for a fella who was a surveyor. I was a surveyor's helper, I guess you would call it. OK? Notice, this is my boss. He was a real nice guy. Notice his shirt is, is white. OK? Nice clean hat and all that. OK? And surveyors go around measuring distances. Okay, and laying off uh, boundaries, etc. Okay, now for instance, we had to uh, measure off a distance. We'll say this distance. Well, it seems pretty easy. Get a tape measure out and measure it. We need to know what that is. Okay, well, unfortunately, ma many of you might have seen surveyors a couple times, but probably you don't see them very often because surveyors never work in an area that's already been surveyed. Of course, okay. So if it hasn't been surveyed, it's out in the middle of nowhere. And unfortunately, that means 
we can't just lay a line there because there's probably trees there. And worse than that, there's probably a swamp there, and there's probably beehives for me to sit on, and there's probably a bunch of other stuff, okay? So, and, uh, and, and is my boss with a white shirt going to do this? I don't think so. My job, that's me. Notice I don't have a white shirt. I don't have white socks. I don't have white anything. It's all covered with dirt, okay? Because I spend 95% of my time not measuring, but chopping down trees, trudging through swamp, etc. Because this is all, you know, land that no human being has ever seen before. Okay? Now, we could measure that after I chopped down the trees. But after a couple of days of working there, my boss said, hey, wait a minute, Witty. Uh, why don't we use trigonometry and save you a little bit of, uh, of brawn there? Okay? W w trigonometry, of course, we have to have a triangle. So we had to lay off a triangle. Oh, there's my, I forgot my, uh, my axe. We had to lay off a triangle. Okay, now th this was still the distance that we wanted, this distance here. Okay, but that was hard to measure. So what I did was measure something that was, was easy. He sent me over, over to this corner, okay, and I could, this was a nice field. Along the bottom there, that's a nice field. I mean, there's butterflies and deer, okay, and I could measure that easily. And I could walk it off. Well, we, we had a, an exact tape measure. We measured that. Okay? And then I did what you've probably seen surveyors do with a tripod type thing. I'm looking at it, and I go. That's all you had to do. Move that bad boy. And you'd measure an angle. And I did measure an angle. Okay? We'll say it's 58 degrees. But that's what you're doing. It's a little teeny protractor inside there. Okay? And I measured that angle. And then I, my boss said, well, you've got a right triangle here, you've got the adjacent leg, you've got an, an angle, and you've got to find the opposite leg. And he said to me, what, what involves the opposite side, the adjacent side, in 58 degrees? You're supposed to memorize that. What involves that? Well, it's the tangent. Your old buddy, the tangent. And we can create a, a, an equation. Our desired side, x, divided by 1,002, that's the opposite x, divided by the adjacent, 1,002, should be the tangent of 58 degrees by definition. Okay? Well, the tangent of 58 degrees, I can uh, find out from a calculator. Okay? I type it in. And, of course, we all know it's 1.60033. No, you use your calculator. Okay? Now, how am I going to solve this equation? I've got to get x alone. I can multiply both sides of the equation by 1,002, cancel like a Jim Bob, okay? And guess what? If I multiply the right side, 1.60033 times 1,002, I got myself an answer. Is that exact enough for you? That's a nice exact answer, okay? And did I have to chop down any trees? I got very interested in trigonometry after that. Now, I'll give you another example. Do you remember, I don't know if any of you are old enough, uh, we used to watch on Tuesday and Thursday night at 8 o'clock, Batman. And it was on twice a week. Batman, uh, invariably, Robin would get in trouble on Tuesday nights, and we would have to worry on Wednesday until Thursday came if Batman was going to save Robin. And, and Every time I remember on, on Thursday evening, first thing, Robin would be up in the top of some building, uh, probably frozen inside of a, uh, a, an ice cube or uh, inside of some giant clam, or he's in some trouble, okay? And along would come Batman. Now, Batman had to save him. How did Batman save him? I don't know if you all remember. Batman always had that batarang thing. It was a big thing on a rope, okay? And every time... He would throw the rope up, oh, and he would hit one of these things. I don't know what these things are, what, what, what they were. In the, I think they were for the Batarang to hit, okay? But anyway, Gotham City had a million of them. They had them all over the, I guess that was for another episode, okay? But they had them all over the place. And then he would throw this Batarang up, and bam, he would hit it up right on the, right on the little schnicky every time, okay? And when I, even when I was young, I used to think, you know, wait a minute. 
you know, that thing could have been too long. I mean, he could have measured off too, too much rope. Or it could have been too short, okay? But you know what? You will remember every time. Bam! He hit it on the first try every time. And I used to think, you know, this, sh this show's a little fake, maybe. I don't know. Until I thought about it, and I had worked with the surveyor, and I said, you know what? Batman knew trigonometry. And, and what do you mean he knew trigonometry? Well, here's the deal, okay? He knew he needed, needed this distance to measure off his rope, so he'd hit it right on the first try, okay? And he also knew that the distance we all know, and this, is, this isn't anything anybody wouldn't know, the distance between uh, two buildings is, is always 15 feet, okay? That's a standard, okay? So he knew that. And of course, here he is standing here. He could pull out his bat protractor he had in that, that belt. He had everything in that belt, okay? That bat protractor, and he could measure, it was close, 79 degrees, okay? And then this guy, he graduated, Batman. He knew, let's see, we've got, what do we have in this case? We've got the hypotenuse, which is what X is. It's the side opposite the right angle. And in this case, 15 is the adjacent leg. Now, what involves the hypotenuse, the adjacent leg, and 79 degrees? You're supposed to memorize that. Okay, which one does that? Well, it's the cosine. Okay, so we would, and what goes on top? The adjacent goes on top. 15 divided by x is the cosine of 79 degrees. Okay, so of course Batman got his calculator out, and he knew he had to solve for x. So the first thing he did was find the cosine of 79 degrees, which you can do. You just learned how to do that. Typed in cosine and 79, hit enter. Okay. Now he has to solve for x. What, what would you do? To, you have to do something to the both, si both sides of each equation. Well, let's, let's multiply. Just one way to do it. Let's multiply both sides by x, thereby canceling this side. OK? OK, let's see what we get then. Well, then we'll have, that'll cancel that out, and we'll get 0.1908x. Well, I don't want 0.1908x. I want x. So I've got to get x alone. Who's keeping him from being alone? the point 0.1908. He's multiplying, so I'll undo him with division. Okay, let's divide. Dividing, we'll cancel it. And on one side, I'll get x. And guess what? 15 divided by 0.1908. Hi, Mom. 78.61. And that's why, boom, he hit it the first time every time. Okay? One more example. Remember back in uh, Civil War days, or even earlier with pirates, it's, um, they had to fire cannons at the enemy, okay? Now, these cannons, they, they might have looked like you could sit there and just lift it up and aim it, but they weighed thousands and thousands of pounds. So it's not like you could say, well, let's, let's aim this bad boy up there, or let's move it down there. You really had to hoist it and know the, the angle at which you wanted to, to shoot it, okay? Well, what they could measure is how far away the target was. They'd send some poor guy over there to measure it, count his steps, he probably wouldn't make it back, but he could scream back. And they knew how high it was, we'll say, okay? Now, what they had to know was the angle. If they could get the angle, they could, they could figure out the right angle and, uh, and, and shoot the target, okay? Probably with some fort or something, okay? Well, let's think about this one. We've got the opposite and the adjacent, but we don't know the angle. But we should know what function's involved here. What function involves the opposite and the adjacent? Well, the tangent, the tangent. And it's the opposite over the adjacent. So it would be 30 divided by 125. 30 divided by 125, if you use your calculator or do the division, you get 0.24. Now here's the problem. That doesn't answer what the angle is. That tells me what the tangent is. I want to know what angle has a tangent of 0.24. That's when you use your buddy the inverse tangent. We kind of untangent it, okay? And if we put, put it in, we just showed you how to put it in. Take the inverse tangent of 0.24, you get 13.495 degrees, right on the head, okay? So that means we can aim that cannon at 13.495 degrees, and guess what? If you get it right aimed, right perfect, boom, you hit them right on. Okay, that's the idea. So sometimes you're trying to find 
you know, an angle. You're not trying to find a side. Of course, you need two sides then. Okay, so there's just a couple of examples. Now, I want to cover a little bit more about this. Let's go back to our surveying example. I want you to consider something. If we're looking for this side, there's a couple ways to do it. Okay? Well, it's the hypotenuse, the adjacent, and 58 degrees. We could do x over 1,002. Well, x over 1,002. That's the hypotenuse over the adjacent. Yes, we could. And that would be the secant. Remember what you're supposed to memorize. Okay? But couldn't we also do 1,002 over x? Put that on top, and that would be the cosine. Well, it really doesn't matter. Whichever one you like, okay, most calculators are going to have a cosine. Uh, that's why uh, the cosine and the secant are called reciprocal functions, because one is the reciprocal of the other. Okay? And there's three sets of reciprocal functions. Okay? What are they? You'll need to know them. Okay? The cosine, as we just showed you, is 1 over the secant, or the reciprocal of the secant. So, consequently, the secant is 1 over the cosine. Okay, let's see. Let's make sure. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the secant is the hypotenuse over the adjacent. That makes sense. Okay, what are the others? The sine is 1 over the cosecant. Consequently, the cosecant is 1 over the sine. Are we sure? The sine being the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosecant is the hypotenuse over the opposite. That makes sense. Okay? Lastly, the tangent is 1 over the cotangent, and the cotangent is 1 over the tangent. Okay, well, you memorize these things. You already know that. You knew the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, and you also knew that the cotangent was the adjacent over the opposite. So you already know what reciprocal functions are, okay, if you memorize those six things. Okay? The ones you're going to want to know the most, though, are these three, the secant, the cosecant, and the cotangent, because eventually we're going to be wanting to turn them, since they're not on a calculator, we're going to be wanting to turn them into cosine, sine, and tangent, the more common functions. So that's, if you wanted to pick something to, to become familiarized with, that, that's what I would do. Okay? Okay, I want to talk a little bit more about triangles. Okay? If we took this triangle and we extended all the sides of it, okay? Extend the bottom, and I'm going to draw a line, we'll call it line L, parallel to the bottom. Okay, trust me on this, parallel. Okay, and then I'm going to extend the other sides forever. Okay, now what I want you to notice is, take a look at what would be angle 1. Okay, angle 1, and it's not even in, in the triangle, angle 2 and angle 3. What can we say about angle 1, angle 2, and angle 3? They kind of form, they form a line. Any protractor would measure them and say, certainly they're 180 degrees. And they are. They form a line, they're 180 degrees. Okay, well, big deal. Well, this angle one, by definition, if you remember way back in geometry, what we called corresponding angles, that angle one has got to be the same as this angle one. Okay? And this angle three, by corresponding angles, they look like a shell don't they? Angle 3 has got to be the same as that angle 3. And by reason of what's called vertical angles, angle 2 has to be the same as that angle 2. So if this set of angles, 1, 2, and 3, add up to 180, guess what? The ones inside the triangle also add up to 180. Maybe it's a coincidence. Let's look at another one. Here's another totally different triangle. Let's do the same thing. We've got our bottoms. And let's draw a parallel with it. Okay, let's extend the sides. Okay, do we have our angles one, two, and three again? Okay, come on in. Come, come on in, two. Come on in. Three. Come on, yeah. Come on, yeah. Okay, get your protractor out. I think you can see this. It's not that hard to see. But get your protractor. Son of a gun. One, two, and three. Again, add up to 180. Okay. Well, what angle's going to match with angle one? It's going to be an angle inside the triangle. There's your boy. Who's going to be a shelf, kind of, or correspond to angle 3? Well, okay, I can see that they form a shelf. And angle 2, once again, same deal, is going to be a vertical angle with the third angle of the triangle. 
So it works again. And I promise you that, and this is worthy of memorizing, the sum of the angles of any triangle will always add up to 180. And that's going to be of use to us, especially when we're talking about a right triangle. Okay, the sum of the angles of any triangle is always 180, 180 degrees. Okay? Now, let, how does that relate to complementary angles? Okay, that's what I want to talk about. Well, first of all, we know the sum of the angles of any triangle is 180. Um, what, what are complementary angles? What are, they complement each other? Okay, by definition, angles are complementary if they add up to 90. Here's an example. A 30-degree angle and a 60-degree angle add up to, not 180, they add up to 90. That makes them complementary, okay? Well, then, if we consider the whole deal is 180, the whole deal is 180, and since it's a right triangle, part of it is 90, what are we going to know, part of it subtracting 90 from 180, what are we going to know about the other two angles, what we'll call the acute angles, the less than 90 angles of a right triangle? Well, the fact is, that those two angles are always going to be complementary. Okay, they're going to have to be. The two acute angles of any right triangle, the ones other than the right angle, are going to have to be complementary. Okay? That's going to be of use to us. For instance, in this example, I've got a right triangle with 25 degrees here. But I don't know that other angle. I can figure it out, though. Let's see. It has to add up to make 90. Hmm. What would that be? Hi, Mom. 65 degrees. Subtract 25 from 90, and you'll know, because they have to be complementary. That makes all three of them add up to 180. Okay? Okay. How, how is this related to our real-life problems? Well, let's consider. Once again, we want to find this. Angle. It's across a lake this time. Okay? They don't have to trudge across the swamp. I've got to swim across a lake to measure it. Okay? Well, once again, we'll measure this bottom distance. If you consider, I could go... Well, let's see, what would I be using here? The secant. The uh, hypotenuse divided by the adjacent would be the secant of 58 degrees. I could do that, okay? But I could also, since I knew that was 58, I now know the other angle has to be 32. Where am I getting 32? It has to be complementary to 58, okay? So I could also say that I could use the cosecant of 32. You see, because x, of course, is the hypotenuse of the whole triangle, y 1002 is the adjacent leg for uh, 58. He's known downtown on Friday nights as the opposite leg for 32. Okay, and we fix a half dozen of the other, whatever you happen to know. Uh, another approach, uh, oh, by the way, that, that's why we call these angles, uh, these, these functions, secant and cosecant, they're co-functions, okay? Let's take a look at another approach to the same deal. I could, uh, uh, another way to solve this uh, equation, I could do 1,002 over x and, and use the sign, okay? 1,002 feet would be the adjacent over the, uh, I'm sorry, that would be the opposite for 32, would be the opposite over the hypotenuse. Um, or I could do, the, let's see, for, for the 58 degrees, it would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and of course it would be the cosine, okay? For that reason, the sine and the cosine are called co-functions, okay? Because they're, they, uh, they give you the same number for complementary angles. Well, let's summarize that, okay? The sine of an angle is the same as the cosine of the complement of the angle, or 90 minus the angle, okay? The cosine of an angle is the same as the sine of the complement of an angle, or 90 minus the angle, okay? That's why, as I said, these are called co-functions. Where does the co come from? Complement, of course, okay? What are some other co-functions? Well, the tangent is the uh, co-function of the cotangent. Okay, and the cotangent, of course, is the co-function of the tangent. That's why we say cotangent, okay? 
The secant is the uh, uh, co-function of the co-secant, and the co-secant is the co-function of the secant. Okay? That's the deal there. Okay, what kind of a problem could I give you? Where would you get a problem like this, perhaps? Okay, given, the, given all these fancy numbers, I know the sine of 72 is, et cetera, the tangent of 72. And someone said, well, listen, I need you to find, you don't have a calculator, okay? You, maybe Batman didn't have it on his belt that day, okay? Could we find the sine of 18 using those numbers? Could we find the tan of 18? Could we find the secant of 18? Hmm. I'll give you a hint. 72 and 18 make 90. Okay, that means they're complementary. Okay, well, I could find the sine of 18. What is the co-function of the sine? The cosine. Okay, so the answer for the sine of 18 is going to be the same as the cosine of 90 minus 18, the cosine of 72, which I already I have listed as 0 0.30090. Okay, the tangent of 18 is going to be the same as the cotangent of the complement of 18, which is 72. So we have the cotangent of 72. Hi, mom. 0.3249. The secant of 18 is going to be the same as the cosecant of 90 minus 18, 72. So you're you're getting ahead of me here. I bet you know it's 1.051, and we could work it backwards too, if we needed to find the cosine of 18, or the cotangent of 18, or the cosecant. Well, those are the cos. We could work back and say, well, the cosine of 18 is going to be the regular sine of its complement, 72, which we have listed as 0.9511. The cotangent of 18 will be the regular tangent. I don't think we call it the regular tangent, but we'll call it that, uh, of 72. And we have that number, 3.078. And the cosecant of an angle will be the same as the secant of 90 minus that angle, which we have. Okay, so that's the way complementary angles, and that's where the co came from, is what we're trying to show you there. Okay, a couple more things about angles I need you to know today. Um, ever since angles began, we measured time with angles, the rotation of the Earth, and various things. We measured uh, parts of a degree. A degree is pretty teeny, okay? One degree like that is teeny. There's 360 of them around in a circle. But we need, perhaps, to be more exact. So one sixtieth of a degree is called a minute, okay? We can measure that. And we can even get smaller than that. One sixtieth of a minute, or thinking about it 60 times 60, one three thousand six hundredth that's small. One three thousand six hundredth of a degree is a second. Okay, so we're using base sixty here, basically. Okay, so and a minute is uh, the way we represent a minute is with the apostrophe and the double apostrophe with the second. Okay. Now consider this. I'll give you an example. What if I wanted to write this as a decimal? What is thirty-five degrees? Or about thirty-four degrees? 41 minutes, 52 seconds as a decimal. Well, it's about 34 point okay? We know it's more than 34.5 uh, because 34 degrees, 30 minutes would be 0.5, 30 being half of a, a degree, okay? Well, we've got to be a better way to do this. Well, if we, if we wanted to do it with pencil and paper, we'd say 34 degrees, okay? And then for every minute, it's 1 60th of a degree, so 41 over 60. And for every second, which we'll, of which we have 52, it's uh, 1 3,600. So you could do that division, okay, 41 over 60 and get 0.6833. And you could do the other division, 52 divided by 3,600, and get 0 0.0144. You get the idea of, of what this is representing here, I hope. And if you add all those up, you get 34.7, approximately. Okay? So that's one way. But you know what? <laughs> the calculator will do this for me. And you should know how to do it, okay? Rather than do all this math. Let's, let's work with the calculator, okay? First thing we want to do is put it, I'll go through it once here, and then we'll do it on the calculator. 
Well, it make sure our mode is in degree measure now. I haven't changed it yet, so I think it's still in degree measure, but we'll check it just in case. Okay? And then we're going to type in 34 second angle degree. Okay? Now that I want to try. I want to show you what's going to happen. Let's go over and do it. Okay, I'm going to clear what we have here. Okay. I'm going to type uh, mode just to make sure verify to myself that son of a gun I am in degree measure there I am I'm still in degree measure so I'll enter out and clear okay now I need to get in the degree so 34 if I type the second then the angle I'll see that there's a bunch of numbered functions I will call them okay number one is degree okay so I can hit one or I can cursor down to whatever I wish I'm gonna of course stay on one I could hit a 1 even, okay? But I'm going to hit enter and I'll get 34 degrees, okay? Now, I still need to get in the 41 uh, minutes. So I'll type 41 on the same line and I've got to get to minutes. I do it the same way. Second angle. Now the minutes is the second one, see, down here. Okay, so I can either cursor to it and hit enter or hit two. I'll cursor down so you can see what's going on and hit enter and son of a gun, get out of this town. I got 41 minutes. Now here's a confusing part. I need to get the, the seconds in there, okay? We're not gonna go second angle to get that, okay? Because there already is a, uh, a quote on the calculator, okay? So I'm going to type my 52, and I've got to find the quote. Now, I'm noting that the quote is green, which means I want to hit the alpha button. The alpha button is the button below the second button. So I'll hit the alpha button first, get a little a, then the quotes, it's down near the bottom right, and I'll get that. Okay, and I'm actually typing in 34 degrees, 41 minutes, 52 seconds, and if I hit enter, I get a nice answer. Okay, Whew. I told you it was a little bit more than 34.5. That's the idea, okay? Okay. Okay, now, that's how to do it on a TI-83, which I think most of you have. If any of you have a TI-82 or a TI-89, okay, it works quite differently, okay? You'll want to hit 30... Uh, Make sure you're in, in uh, degree measure, okay? Then you'll start off, you'll hit 34 second angle uh, apostrophe, okay? And 41 second angle apostrophe, and 52 second angle apostrophe. Don't ask me why, I didn't invent the calculator. That's the way it works. Let's do it, just to show you. Now this is a TI-83, so it's not gonna work, but I just wanna show you how you would do it, okay? Well, let's see, I'd type in and I, I know I'm in the right mode, so I'm going to type in 34, second, angle, and I'm going to move down to the 2 just so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, and I put that, and normally that would be a degree, as you can see. Okay, but this, we're, this is only for the uh, TI-82 and the TI-89. And then I'd put in my 41, second, angle, and I'd put another uh, apostrophe. Okay, and then I, once again, I put in my 52. Second angle. Okay, and I just do a multiple apostrophes. I think they're thinking that that makes it easier, I guess. I don't know. But uh, this being a TI-83, as I told you, I'm going to get an error. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. Um, it would have worked on a TI-82. Okay, it would have worked the same way. So I'll just hit enter and get out of that error, and everybody's happy. I'll clear out. Okay, so that's how to do it on the other calculators. Okay, nice long exact answer. Okay, now what if I want to go backwards? What if I want to put 16.35, okay, I already have as a decimal, and I want to go back to degrees, minutes, and seconds, if you understand degrees, minutes, and seconds. Okay, well let's see. That's going to be 16 degrees, okay, and the 0.35 is, is of a degree. So what would be 0.35 times 1? 
times one degree, or one degree known downtown as 60 minutes, okay? Well, let's see, 60 times 0.35 is 21 minutes. So that would be one way to do it if you did it on pencil and paper, okay? But you don't need to do it on pencil and paper. You really should uh, use a calculator, okay? The way to do it with a calculator, and this is much easier, we only need one button for this, okay? Once again, as always, if you're old like me, you want to make sure you, you forget things. You want to make sure you're in degree measure here. So I always start off with mode degree measure, okay? Then we're going to use this DMS. Now, what do you think DMS stands for? Degrees, minutes, seconds, okay? And it's actually on the second button, okay? 16.35, second, angle, and there's a DMS. I'll show you in a second, okay? And then hit enter. And I'm hoping we get that. Cool. It's in degrees, minutes, and seconds. Let's do it with the calculator. Okay. Let's see. We're already already has a decimal. So 16.35. Okay, now I gotta get this DMS Billy. Second angle. Now where is DMS? It's number four, and as I told you before, you could actually just hit four, but I want you to see what's happening. I'm going to curse her down to four and hit enter. Okay? And actually, I'm, I'm, I have to hit enter again. Okay? And cool as a mule, I get 16 degrees, 21 minutes, zero seconds. That would have worked for anything you put in, any decimal you put in. Okay? So that's a nice, easy way to do it. Use your DMS button. Okay? So that's what DMS is, degrees, minutes, seconds. Okay, let's review. That's a, people say, I've learned quite enough here, thank you very much. Well, let's, let's, let's review, okay? So suppose, if you would, that we wanted to measure the height of this volcano, okay? Well, there is one uh, terrible way to do it, is to jump in a hole and uh, measure on your way down, okay? Well, it's, it's, there's got to be another way. We need a right triangle if we're going to use trigonometry. We know that, okay? Well, let's see, we need a right angle. We're going to assume that this volcano goes straight up. We're, we're, of course, we're trying to measure the vertical distance, so we, that's a fair assumption. Okay. okay, let's find a triangle. Let's find one of the sides that we can measure easily, and that's the side that I would measure running away from the volcano. Okay. So let's see, that's, I'm, going to, I'm going to measure the bottom side. Okay. And we'll say that's 4,132 feet. Not far away enough for me, but you get the idea. Now, I need one other thing uh, to use trigonometry. I need an angle, which I can measure, okay, with a protractor. I'll go stand at this spot, okay, that spot, and look up with my protractor, okay, and we'll say, oh, oh, I used the surveyor's equipment. I didn't use the protractor. I used the surveyor's equipment, and I got 34 degrees, 16 minutes, 3 seconds. Well. I'm going to convert that just for review. Let's convert that to, to, uh, to decimal notation, okay, so it's easier to work with, okay? Uh, we're not ready for the opposite adjacent in that yet, okay? Let, let's, let's convert it. Okay, how would we do that? How do we write it as a decimal? Well, that's the hard way, okay? Let's do it the easy way, okay? Let's see, mode, degree, measure, 34, second angle, degree, 16, second angle, apostrophe, or minutes, and 3, alpha uh, quotes, okay, or, or seconds, okay? And I'm hoping you can hit enter and get that. Let me try it. I'm going to take the time to do that on the calculator so we can convert it. Okay, I'm going to assume that I'm already in degree measure, and I'll go 34, second, angle. Got to get to degrees. I'm already there, so I'll hit enter. Okay, then 16, second, angle. And I need the minutes, so I go down to the minutes. Now remember, you don't go in there for the seconds. You hit alpha. And on the bottom right, the actual seconds or, or uh, quotes. Oops, I screwed up. I've got a cursor back and put in my three. Now alpha and that and the seconds. Okay, and hit enter. 
and I get 34.2675. I hope that's what I got before. <laughs> 34.2674, I guess I was rounding. Okay, so let's replace that, okay? That is 34.2674. Okay, now I'm ready to say, what involves the opposite, the adjacent, and 34.2674 degrees? Okay, opposite and adjacent, opposite and adjacent. That's the tangent, okay, the tangent. Okay, so let's see. The opposite, x, over the adjacent, 40,132, is the tangent of this magic number, 34.2674, okay? Now, what would be the next thing to do, I guess, would be to take the tangent of 34.2674, use your calculator, okay, and you're going to get 0 0.68132, or close to that, okay? You type in tangent and 34.2674. Okay, now I've got to solve this equation for x. Who's keeping x, who's keeping x from being alone? 4,132, he's dividing, so I'll multiply both sides, to be fair, uh, by 4,132. One cancels out, and the other one, I have to do the multiplication, and I'm going to get x is 2,815 feet. That's how high that volcano is. Holy, go to war. Okay, so that's kind of a review of everything that we covered today. Okay, so that's all for today. Uh, at this point, you're going to want to do homework number three and homework number four in the syllabus that I handed out the first day. Remember, homework number four is a review uh, problem. Uh, you're going to be uh, learning way more, I think, from uh, actually doing the homework than uh, actually listening to me babble up here. Um, if you have trouble with that, don't forget that there's a home page that you can go to. Um, the address of the home page, as you can see on the screen, is www.mc.cc.md.us up slash tilde, that's the little worm on the top left of your keyboard, tilde witty. Okay, now at this home page, you, uh, you can see the syllabus, see which homeworks you're supposed to do from the book. Uh, and you can get the answers to the homeworks, okay? But you will have to show me all the work uh, on, on the homework that you hand in. And, and um, if you want to re review this uh, video or the, the uh, slideshow that I've been showing you here, uh, you can actually see that on the home page and, and review it at your own pace uh, under uh, the View Class Animations. You can even email me with questions uh, if you're too shy to uh, call me. My phone number is in the syllabus, and you're welcome to do that as well. Okay? So we'll see you next time. Thank you very much.